Uh oh. Oh uh, my God. Dude, yeah. re- reunited and it feels so good. Reunited and it feels so good. Thank you for tuning in to Playground Politics coming through your ear holes. The official team has reunited. Yo, Voltron is in the building. Oh, it's incredible. Oh my god, dude! I, yo, I Kyrie like, and LeBron. I feel like I haven't, I haven't Pippen been my, myself lately. You know what I mean? I haven't had, I haven't had this interaction. You know? You did a great job holding it down, man, and you know I appreciate you. Shout out to everybody uh, who supported Coil's solo ventures. Yep, uh, I, I've been peeping. I listened. Yeah, I kind of like, I kind of did my own like little solo uh, effort, but now yeah. I'm back with with Arrowsmith. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's I think that's. The I did the I Steve mean. Perry prop, whatever the fuck that dude's name is. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm back with Steven and the guys. You know what I mean? I'm ready to just fucking hit the road, guys. This is uh, this week and uh, all weeks moving forward for the foreseeable future. We're gonna do audio only. Listen, yeah, dude, video's cool. It's and all, cool. But... It'll get on the YouTube as audio, and maybe we'll start to use the YouTube for more. But yeah. like, like here's the fact of the matter, you guys have got to get other people into this. That's where we're at with this. You know, we uh, we got to allot our time wisely. But as a podcast coming through audio once a week, we're going to do as good as we've ever done. Yeah, you know, doing we're, we're, we're going to crush that shit. We're going to, you know, that's what we're going to do. So I've been away. Uh, a lot of personal stuff going on in a positive way. Uh, sort of the first uh, of the big announcements that I think has been made is that uh, I'm engaged. Dun, dun, dun. As of last week, uh, last weekend, when uh, normally I would have woken up my girlfriend to go to work, mm-hmm. I woke her up as this mad early. We do this shit on Fridays, dude, like 5.30 in the morning. It sucks. I don't know if you ever had to wake up that early, but it's like legitimately painful. When the, when it's like still dark oh, out? Oh, dude, it's the worst. The birds are still sleeping. You're like, fuck. So every Friday kind of sucks in that capacity, you know? Yeah. So I wake her up and instead of going to work, I'm like, yo, you don't have to go to work. You have to go to Miami with me. We're going to Miami, you know, pack. You have to get up and pack a bag, basically. So how did you get her out of work? So her friend, Alyssa, uh, is is pretty close with both of us. Yeah, so definitely with her. But um, I reached out to her and I was like, and they work together. And I was like, yo, get her off Friday and Monday. And it was kind of funny, too, because uh, I did it like on a whim. And um, I'm like, I get excited, dude. I'm an excitable dude. Like when I have like a good idea, you know? So I like book the shit and then I'm like, yo, get her and get her off. So that could have gone totally. Like it's happening regardless. Yeah. Like no matter what. It's, it's happening. Let's not make this a problem. <laughs> so shout out to Alyssa for helping with that. But oh uh, it was cool, man. Put her on a plane, first class, you know, drinking immediately. So it was a she, good time. Do you think she had any idea? No, hell no. She knew it was coming. Like, she knew that we were going to get engaged. I, I know that, but do you she, know, like, that no weekend? What did way. you say? Did you, were you just like, look, little vacation, John? Like, were you acting like you had some kind of work down there? No, I just kept fucking with her. Like, uh, not, not like in a bad way. Like, just, I just had a series of surprises set up, you know? So, like, it was like, first, we're going to Miami. Right. Second, we're flying first class. Right. Like, third, we're staying at the Epic. Fourth, we're going to Louis Vuitton. They have a bag for you. Fifth, like, you know, like I just had like a series of Dude, shit. So you hit like, it, the whole time. You hit it from, like from every angle. Yeah. Like, like I think this is, like I think this is a kind fucking... of like, it's kind of an awkward thing to flex about. Like, I'm not going to spend the whole podcast like, and then I walked her by, so then, by her hand into Louis Vuitton. I had I said, the lights turned at a I certain said, degree. Baby, you get what you want. <laughs> no, I'm not going to be doing all that. She but. walked in and the fucking doves were flying the rose petals. We did rose petals. I did do rose you petals. Did I did rose petals, Uh, champagne, chocolate covered strawberries, a good view and whatnot. Geiger uh, hooked us up with a cool spot with like ice skating, this and that and the other thing in the club, which was kind of crazy. That's crazy, dude. Yeah. uh, Great. It was dope, um, man. Great photos, too. Thank you. So that was a good good help. The Dwayne Wade's photographer, actually. Uh, because I do some work with their brand. That was a funny story, dude. So I was gonna say, how did you tell yo, her? Like, yo, there's just gonna be this photographer. No, this is this was mad the funny. Fuck out of here, dude. This was mad funny. <laughs> so she doesn't know where we're going the day that it's happening, right? And it, like, I made sure that there was like a couple scenic 
spots before then where she was like maybe like is this it is this it you know? oh you're such I a just kept dick. Fucking so <laughs> you're such a but, dick uh, so she gets in the car we show up uh Vizcaya is where i did it. it's like this anyone who's been knows it's I've like heard about absolutely it. it's in rap songs fucking, if dude, it's in rap songs uh, yeah we're good it's gorgeous you know and i had one of Dwayne's photographers there and so she knows me really well we've been together nine years like this isn't a spur of the moment thing you know yeah so she's just like why are you so fucking like intrigued like because there's like a little like you can walk yourself through this house basically mm. right and i'm like trying to go slow enough for the photographer to spot us and like start doing his thing you oh know? so you had but him it's a, like it's in a, the cut yeah he was totally in the cut and uh oh, it's like a mansion shit. right so i'm like oh look at uh the fixtures in the kitchen and, and i'm like, texting like she's like son you don't like fixtures yo i'm texting i'm here. texting the photographer like yo in the kitchen in the kitchen he's like there's six kitchens i'm like ah oh, man freezers were crazy in 1905 Will you know? look at this <laughs> this this ceiling is is look crazy. at these pots and pans Yo, it is trippy in here. So she's like, you're, she's like, whatever. And she's, she's moving at a pace that like we normally would, you know? So she's I'm like, like now I'm like, house. I'm like chasing yeah. her around the house. She's like, this is nice. Let's go over here. And I'm like, damn, God damn it. Now I'm in the hallway. So I'm trying to keep this guy up to speed. Anyway, he catches up and he's doing his thing. And, uh, at one point at, She's we, like, why is this guy taking uh, one, No, but at one point, us. we're like, at one point, we're moving like a little too quick. Oh, no, she wanted to head upstairs. And I'm like, bro, you got to get closer. We're headed upstairs and I don't want to lose you upstairs. I'm texting. And I'm like, on the, like, at this point, I feel very awkward. Like, I'm texting when I wouldn't normally be texting. I know the feeling. I wouldn't. You, you know, I would get, be. You work this hard to get this far. Yeah. And be, you can't blow it right yeah, now. Yeah. And I'm like trying to, you know, I would normally like hold her hand and walk around yeah. and when, and I'm like texting and nervous and staying behind her. So, so she can't see my. So finally, she's. I was like, "Listen, I give up, man. There's a fucking photographer here, and like, we need to." <laughs> yeah, I just lost my shit for a second. I was like, "We need to just wait." And I'm sorry, and I don't mean to blow the surprise, but there's a photographer. And she's like, "Oh, I know the the black guy with the man bun." I'm like, Yo, "Oh my girls god, girls are so goddamn Dude, perceptive." She was like, "The guy's been clocking us this whole time." <laughs> <laughs> taking pictures strikingly only in our direction racks like you know? racks like hitting poses too like so i'm like all right so it was uh, really cool too because then you know where you know me well enough to know i have a, like a pretty good sense of humor and my girlfriend's like super funny like unintentionally funny i always say like she could never be a stand-up comedian but like if you're just around her like you'll you just it. like crack yeah, up yeah, you yeah. know but um so uh now we know and we're walking through this like picturesque beautiful miami day and uh i'm like you know we're having fun with it i'm like you'll flip your hair a couple times you know it's just like flipping her yeah, hair dude, back. Yo, like, uh, walk a little slower shit. hey give me a long kiss right at the end of this pier you know just like we just like we normally would but yeah. we we're totally hamming it up for him a little bit oh you that's know? so cool and man. then we were coming back um along the coast of of like house has a coast but you know what i mean like up against the water dude, it was gigantic and uh we're coming down towards him and i'm like all right go slow so he could nail the shot you know it was, it was pretty funny and then actually funny enough then we had cues like i had cues with him like uh, places where i specifically wanted photos and then obviously where i was going to pop the question you know and i'm headed down and uh to get in position basically position one yo so like right right beforehand are yeah. you thinking like all right i'm gonna hit the knee like did yeah. you already have your like your touchdown celebration oh dude if you know me at all everything <laughs> was planned like ev yeah. dude everything she ate drank saw people she met uh what i was wearing like you i wanted know, to be but, completely unbranded so i was like in geigers reason, and lapstone and that's part of the, the reason Jeep. that that yeah that she likes you though like that's right, you right. dog right, like right, right. that's what you do so for this situation, yeah. having it any other way wouldn't be you. So like, yeah. I think that's that's really sweet, dude. And um, thank you, man. And I think that that's cool. And I was really happy when I saw the picture. Yeah. And the thing is, it's like I'm pretty good with keeping secrets, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I'll, like I'm a steel trap when it's serious shit. Right. Like right. this kind of thing. When you told me like beforehand, you were like, "Yo, I can't make the pod." Like, and I'm doing this. I was yeah. like, I was like, "Damn." I was like. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that's a little juicy tidbit. I was I like, hold on to this like, one. I was like, I can't even leave my house. For no, the but shout out days. to shout out to everyone that helped make it happen too. You know, that that's like a, it took a team to do this. This isn't this isn't like a, 
you know what I'm like at your favorite restaurant right before dessert. This was like fly to a different state, use a celebrity photographer at a national landmark. You know, like this took the this took so for the effort. for the ring. How did you get a ring finger? Did you swipe one of her rings? So size? actually, she had a ring that needed sizing. And so Tight. it was very easy, like Tight. when she got the sizing done, to just be like, "Yo, what size be, is yeah, your ring?" Yeah, yeah, you know, like really. Like, eh, when you eh, ask that eh. question, when you ask that question, girls' radar yeah. goes up. It's like, yeah. "Oh shit, he needs my ring size." Like, "Oh shit." I designed the ring too, so that's been in process over the last year and a half. But anyway, dude, if you can imagine, they all it all culminates to this moment where I'm headed to like position one. Uh, where if you've seen on my Instagram, we're like up on these ruins, and he gets and he got that money shot, and um, I'm headed there. And I'm mad, getting mad nervous, like weird. It's and, a big fucking deal. I get it. And then uh, homie, homie out of nowhere goes like, are you rack? No And I'm way. like, no way, bro. He stops me. Uh, shout out to, I can't remember his name. I think he runs the account Soul Bands. Okay. If you're familiar with. Shout out to you, dog. Dude. For, for the most inopportune shout Dude, out. Dude, literally the only time in front of this fucking 600 room mansion that I'm in a hallway like that. I cannot escape. It's outdoors, oh. but there's like a huge, uh, whatever, 24 foot manicured bush. And then the wall of the house is like, uh, like patio or entertainment area, outdoor out entertainment area. And I'm like in this narrow space with him and his girlfriend. And he's like, what the fuck are you doing here? And I'm like, bro, like, oh, I'd love dude, to tell you. I'm just checking out this house. Cause. You know, like how, what are you doing? Eh, eh. So we have this conversation and uh, shout out to him. He has so, such kind words and, and uh, he's been a supporter for a really long time. So I didn't mind having the moment with him, but I'm like trying to uh, actually, you know, that's always dope, but I'm trying to get where I need to be, you know? So I, I thought that was pretty damn funny. And then, uh, so we walk these like luxurious gardens that, that, that this property has, and you come to like this end point. And if you go up these stairs, there's like a little, a little walkway or walk around. And, uh, if so, if you turn back towards the stairs, you just came up. Now you're looking at the entirety of the grounds, right? Which is, uh, the, the photo of me on my knees, like that is all the way down the garden and right straight to the front of the house. It's like this perfect picturesque moment. But to get that shot, I had to kind of like linger up there for a minute because this family is checking out this fucking iguana. Oh. Dude, I'm like, an iguana? So this iguana is like fucking whatever, doing what iguanas do. I almost wanted to say to the family, like, it's a fucking iguana being an iguana. Like, go away. Oh, my God. Anyway. It, it, was zoo. it felt, yo, know, it felt like an eternity, but it was just a couple minutes. And uh, by the time we got to this to, to the spot on the walk around, everything worked out perfect. And it was funny because uh, all of the shots that are that are published right yeah, now, yeah, yeah, yeah. those are all legit. That's all like legitimately happening. But I was so nervous and I'm such an anal control freak that we also staged them like a well, hundred wanna, different ways. Dude, it's a, it's a big memory. I was, uh, I was I like, Joe, just pretend you're shooting Wade, you know, like I need the over the shoulder and the behind the, da, 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 and the, let me get the I need ring the, on her the finger. Behind the back pass and and then, uh, magically dude, those all look terrible. And the, the one, thing, the real man. thing looked, looked amazing. And that's all I, uh, all, all I really wanted from yo, that. Yo, so what did she say? She said, uh, holy shit. When she saw the ring and then shortly after said, yes. Which, awesome, dude. Which is fantastic. So that's where we're at with that. Uh, what if she was like, what if she was like, oh. <laughs> we, dude, imagine. Because you were breaking her balls a little bit. What if she was just like, you know what? Um, she should have fucked with me a little bit, maybe. No, nah, dude. It, it's such a moment. I think that's one of the things that I, I, I was really taken by. Like, I had planned this whole fucking thing. I designed the ring myself, which takes an enormous amount of effort believe it or not and an enormous amount of money an enormous amount of money right and then but that's going to be in your family for no that's forever. fine I'm, I'm not worried about that but that's the, dope, but the coordination, I, I really respect that thank you man then the coordination though you know yeah. i'm calling your friends i'm getting her out of work i'm booking flights i'm getting hotels so I'm no wonder upgrading you haven't the been on the suite podcast i'm doing the concierge <laughs> yeah right 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 i'm working with concierges and hotels and we want to eat at zuma and it's mad hard to get a reservation and or i wanted to eat at zuma she didn't know but uh she certainly didn't hate it um and i'm working on it and then you're in the moment and you think like, like right before I thought like, well, I've been with her nine years. I wanted to do this for a while. I got my life right. 
the rings paid off and like like here we go you would think that you're like so prepared for that because it took so much time but you just but become a still, dude used to become such a bumbling fuck it's still I'm that like, moment oh, but, 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 and then she's that like, moment. Hey. she starts cr- ugly crying which uh bugs you out you know so now i'm crying and uh, anyway the whole uh, what a moment that really is well, for like, anyone who's experienced it i'm sure you're I'm sure you're marriage. Familiar. Marriage is, is is something that's been, you know, obviously ingrained in us since we were little kids. Right. Right. And um, for me, it's weird because um, my out my view of it was two ways. It was my grandparents married for like ever, dude. You yeah. know what I mean? The epitome of a, of, a, of a couple. Right. Right. And then my parents, which didn't work um, mm-hmm. and who split when I was like seven. So yeah, yeah. Um, I have like mixed views. Like, right. Part of me thinks marriage is amazing right and right, right. Then the other part of me is like um you know like look at the uh, i just uh, i'm yeah. torn yeah right? anyway. and i haven't met that person yet so i think that uh everything will work itself out but this man. is actually my my take on it is pretty interesting so like i just said we definitely didn't rush into this we've been together for a really long time no i would say and, you definitely didn't rush in. <laughs> and uh <laughs> like all the all the cheesy stuff which is true but cheesy like she's my best friend and I couldn't do life without her and yeah, all like, those th- all those things aside, those are shout out those to Jackie, are very dude. true. She seems like she's a fucking oh, dude, really cool the, chick. Dude. She is a the bomb. And she puts up with you, dog. No, and that's, that's amazing. Unbelievable. But but when it came to like, am I actually, <laughs> you know, getting married or even interested in getting married, that came that that's almost strategic from my point of view, you know? It's like like you you're very aware of some of the other announcements coming throughout the rest of the year. Yeah. Like, dude, this started in her mom's basement. You know what I'm saying? Like So she's been along for the ride. You know what I mean? Like I I I was like I I I got this idea, you know? I've got this idea. I had a little bit of money and I and I had this idea and everyone believed in me and supported me and, you know, not like again a weird flex but okay but we live in a penthouse she's got a friggin ginormous ring that i designed myself on a private trip to miami and you know the rest of the story for the rest of the year yeah. right like to get here together yeah i'm just like yo i need to lock in my team <laughs> you yeah, know what yeah, i mean yeah. like like you and the bullshit. you know what i mean like this is this is my right hand unquestionably you know what i mean and her family is my family unquestionably you're my boy i'm locking you in ev dog you know everybody like that that uh is important to me at this stage in my life like right now which really feels like a super high you know i'm like oh this is this is it this is this is everybody that you know that counts i want to take this back to the podcast when you were like yo i think it was about maybe two months ago maybe or two and a half months ago when, right, right. when you were just like, you know what, dude, like shit's, shit's not right right now in, yeah, in, in yeah. my life and shit. Right. And you were like, I, I got to change some things and I know what I got to change. And, and you did it. Yeah. And I really, I don't want to gloss over that because I'm, I'm at right. that same pivotal point in my life. And um, to acknowledge it. Yeah. And then make a plan and then execute it is easier, easier done, easier said than done, right? Yeah. And you can't really, you can't really gloss over the fact that you fucking did it, dude. Like so far, it's going. I, I, I think just, it's important. Like if if you're listening and you and you're not sure, or maybe now, okay. So uh, what what's the phrase like uh, when you're thinking about something in the past? It's crystal clear. Hindsight is hindsight is twenty, is 20. Is twenty twenty. Right. So. Now I could tell you exactly what I was feeling. I was feeling underappreciated or a little held back or like uh, maybe there was a a gatekeeper or two that was like playing me or trying to sun me or whatever. And um, I felt more than ever like supremely confident and not not only like in my abilities, but in the things that I had done, like my resume was super strong, you know, so. Uh, and this is life wide. This isn't like just because I'm using analogies like resume or whatever. I'm not yeah, talking yeah, yeah. specifically and only about work. You yeah, know? yeah. But um, if you're listening and you feel that way, particularly feeling underappreciated, that really it sucks. S- it sucks, sucks dude. dude. That's like that's the balls, bro. That is the worst part. When you're trying to so, do your best and you're crushing it and, oh, and you're not man. getting that feedback that you that you feel like you deserve. Yeah, dude. And life isn't changing for you. Like if you're doing like consistently insane shit and you're and life is the same. Mm. My life wasn't bad, mind you. You know, no, no, my, no. my life was fun. Like that's one of the things I said on that podcast was like, man. 
I'm going to come off like a real jerk off to people well, that aren't where I'm at. But I was on a hamster wheel, man. And, and that's frustrating whether you're, you know, you're in the hood on a hamster wheel so or in the penthouse. People on like a Heath Ledger. Wheel, you know? Yo. Uh, all these people yeah. that have millions and millions of dollars that end up doing things to take their own it, life. Or, yo, it's not all peaches and cream just because you're in no, a certain hell part no. of life, dude. So, uh, again, not to be like super cliche, but if you really believe in yourself, like here's one of the things I learned, like if you're waiting for somebody in your, in, like in your industry, in your way, in your lane to like reach back and pull you up. Yeah. Good luck, bro. You're going to, you'll, you'll, you'll drown. Right. There's like five of us that would really do that, you know? And then if you're looking for somebody to, to co-sign you. Yeah. Good luck. Into the in today's age where everybody's a brand, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Where everybody's like, you know, da 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 da. And you know, I had friends, and uh, this is no disrespect to them. I love these guys, but I had friends that could create opportunities for me and never did. You I know, what, you know what I'm say, saying? Yeah, like my whole life, I, yeah. I was always a people pleaser, and I, I right. I'm known, yeah. I'm known as this, right? Right. And I always figured. I mean, this is pigheaded, but this is this is young thinking. I always figured that eventually um because i saw what they were doing i was always trying to help others right right i always thought that one of them would would help me out it's like just when it's, they got their foot in the door that they would be like hey and put my their name on the resume for me or like get me the job or like help me get the job yeah, yeah. and I, it was always going to be union labor because all that's the group that i grew up with that was our our ceiling was right. union labor right now I'm not a, a big fan of laboring, but I would do it to to have a life and have a yeah. career, right? And when it came down to it, now I did things along the way yeah. that made that more difficult. A hundred percent, and the same. And that's my be fault. said here, right? Yeah. But at the end of the day, um, being a good person doesn't really doesn't go on a resume. Yeah, and, and here's the thing that, like, in my life, like, um, I don't want to say they did nothing, but there were people that could have, like immediately put me on type thing right? right but i also realized like because hindsight's 2020 that i was on i'm on i've been on right since i was editor-in-chief at kicks on fire like i've been on in this industry this whole time you just get frustrated like where you're at and you and and you want you want to see your life especially when you're thinking about like getting married and and moving like into that space you know yeah, it's just fucking we're adult. buying a home all adult. kinds of shit right. you know what i mean like you you just want to make sure that you have forward momentum you know and um it just occurred to me like a very shortly after that podcast like that that was up to me dude you know what i mean like 100 percent uh whether other people could have done it for me or allowed it for me or made it easier for me or whatever like maybe you need to hear like it sounds dumb and obvious now but i didn't i didn't know until that day and maybe you don't know if you're listening that like that's like straight up up to you like you just have to i i called it checking what my stock was worth like i i said like okay well I, this is what i think i'm worth and like this isn't this isn't 27 year old arrogant rack because i've been that guy I sold my company for a lot of money i was like you know you were feeling yourself. i was feeling myself yeah. and and nobody could tell me nothing it wasn't like that it was just like oh like i know people know who I am and what I've done. And like, there's a, there's been a, there's a couple platforms that are where they are because of me. So let's go see like what that's worth. You know what I'm saying? Like where, like compared to where I'm at now, like what opportunities could I have now? Do I see it playing out the way it did? No, no, not at all. I mean that, but, but that's what it really takes. So if you're at, if you're at home, like listening, you feel sort of like that underappreciated, whatever, like be real with yourself. That's the realest thing. Like I had to self-criticize first, right? I had to say like, well, I spent five years being a real asshole to a lot of people in these, in this industry. You know what I mean? I had to say things like that. I had to say things like, well, you know, I shot 98% from the field, but I had like 2% bricks too. You know what I mean? Like mm. air balls in the fourth quarter for sure like you have to you have to be really real about where you're at but if you do that assessment and you're honest with yourself and you and you like bro i'm like i'm an aa minus at worst then you need to put yourself back in the in the field a little bit and and, and let other people tell you that you know what i mean like you can't to a degree you can self-criticize but you can't self-validate right i hear that i hear that so you need to go out there and be like right right like i like, like all aren't i, aren't it, I? <laughs> you know like wouldn't I, it wouldn't it be great to work with me or or not again this isn't specifically and only about work like wouldn't it be great for us to mature as a friend group wouldn't it be great for us to become homeowners wouldn't it you know what i mean 
any of these things, right? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Um, I wanted to um I wanted to touch base yeah. on something because we just crossed there and I'm the king of of transitions. Let's do it. Um speaking of of you know uh self-made um yeah. JC Lopez, right? Word. He is a self-made New Jersey native yeah. that went out to Las Vegas with nothing but the clothes on his back and built a reselling company known as Urban Necessities. Yeah. Now, they were self-sufficient out there in, in the desert, and they were doing their thing. They, they, they moved up in, 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 um, in stature when they went to the bigger mall that's closer to the Strip. Huge layout. Um, he's a lot of a big clientele, and, he, and he's, he's got um, a long bank account to buy these. He's, like, known for the real, real hype shit. Like, yeah, PEs. Yeah. Like, you go there to spend, uh, to spend a dollar, right? Right. Um, but what he's lately been really known for is going to these these sneaker cons and just blowing fucking stacks. Like I think there's most time out real quick. Though, yeah. Because one thing I want to say about that, and it's not like a tattletale thing. It's just for the sake of accuracy. Uh -huh. That's American Eagles money. Well, now it is. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes, but I, we will say that <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. a little, that's a little thing in the story. But I know the branding is right. I went and spent $400,000. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. But in the, in the, in for the story's sake, right. Yeah. It just looks like it's this guy. Cause it's, it's cool. Just, and that's the better way to do it. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. It's just like in this flex culture, mm. flex with your own. Right. When you're not in JC's position right. and when you're in JC's position, flex like he's doing oh, yeah. nothing wrong with what he's doing right but so yeah. he goes and in this last video i i watched because it's been a little topic um that arose on the uh the youtube world he spent four hundred thousand dollars in one day on jesus. sneakers right jesus so um that's a almost a half mil um in in kicks and the the picture that he posted is amazing it's a wall of yeezys and jordan ones wow so and and of course off whites that's like the the model of the new reseller right so i was thinking um because there's a scene in it where he walks over to a table full of um children's size travis scott ones that never existed that have never been made yeah. right so they're obviously from across the water they're 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 chinese um they're fake they're fake there's no other way to say it. or that's so, the most poignant way to say right it, clearest the way, way that they get it into sneak because sneaker con has an authentication booth they're they're yeah. real big with putting their little stock x tag but it's their brand right. on these sneakers they had they're real big in the line you know, and it's to help the buyers authenticate their sneakers on ground level before you make a deal. Like right. before you make your deal, you go, oh, let's go over to the tent. OK, whatever. Now, the way that they get these through is they say they are, quote unquote, customs. Yeah. And they they kind of let it slide because it's a children's size. They they think like, OK, the, what what does a five year old care if the shoe is authentic right. or not? It almost crosses into a section where it's like parody right or like, you know what i mean very much so or fun or but whatever. here's where the, the, the who cares if my kid come on he's right. having fun he's gonna grow out of he it looks anyway fresh he's gonna grow yeah. out of, and that's cool yo i get it if that's what you're selling it as there are people also who make the argument that you can't fake something that isn't made right like if there was a kid's right. 5c it's not a replica then it's then it's fake right. but if there is never been kids sizes then it's then it falls into it's a this gray, like which parody, is why they're fun, allowed to be there. Customs. Okay, right. got you. Yeah. So that because I asked, I said, well, aren't they like all against this? Uh, this this all, these across the water sneakers? Aren't they like against that? And right. that's their their version of like um, the uh, the the parenthetical. Um, it's the, funny how these dudes that are in the in that business yeah. find these loopholes yeah. everywhere. Like, well, it started regardless with, where it started with the the Yeezys. Yeah, yeah. Remember the little baby Yeezys? Yep, they didn't yep. exist, but like Kanye's kids had them. And you can straight advertise those. Yes. Like on Instagram, you yeah. can just run an ad, like because yeah. there there is not a actual. Uh -huh. And they'll do things like neglect the branding on the insole or whatever. They're just the, just, it's just, just, it's just enough. Yeah. That it's not you know. So here's whatever. where it gets a little murky. He's right. And now, if it'd be different if, if these people are just selling them one at a time to people. Right. But he's now taking these shoes and he's bringing them into his establishment, which is inside of American Eagle. Gotcha. And he's selling these um, sneakers at like, I guess, like a 10 percent, nine and a half percent markup, uh, mm -hmm. which is what he makes. So he's only making like maybe 20 bucks a pair. OK. Now, is it worth the 
us talking about the making a, a, a big deal out of it because it made me look at everything else that, that he was doing. And it, well, what's I, the what's you're the only I, and I don't mean this in any way, but yeah. you're you're the only one paying attention, let's say, to quote unquote, the YouTube streets. Where right. I, where right. I'm guessing this is being discussed. Yeah, well, that's where I saw it. And I, cause yeah, I, yeah. It, it popped up on my feed. And so I just, what's the read? What are the uh, I don't know, Zaya's saying about this sort of thing? Well, it, it it sparks the conversation because I was against it. And I actually um commented on on one of zaya x's videos and i said oh was well, zaya yeah i actually commented <laughs> and i said always in the mix. i was like why are you even talking like why are we even talking about this like right, like right. he's self-made like why even bring attention to it right right and i was kind of against it and then i went i, I didn't know what i was talking about i was kind of speaking out my the side of my neck yeah so i went back and i actually looked at what he was talking about and um the amount of shoes that they are authenticating in a short period of time is immense Right. So what I'm saying is these 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 fake sneakers are getting very very good. What are the yeah. odds that all of those sneakers are authentic? Well, here's the thing, man. Um, you know, it's the same for StockX. It's the same for Goat. It's the same. Oh, for and it's not just him. And I don't Grail. Wanna, I it's hate, the same for I don't eBay. Wanna, yeah, and I you love have that, to dude. shop responsibly. Like it's yeah. up to you to get knowledgeable. They they will do their best. None of those companies, including Urban Necessities, wants to sell you a fake. Mm. good right right so they're doing their best and that should give you a certain level of comfort but you still can't shop blindly no you know everything i've ever i'm a, i'm stock x loyal because I, I like josh luber a lot as a person i'm not affiliated but don't do josh if you ever wanted to sponsor this podcast or anything that i'm ever doing that would be the most organic shit ever because uh i love stock x but um I, I bought something from stock x yesterday right so huh. Everybody uses but it. even them, right? Yeah. Where it, where I'm, I'm friends with the the co-founder slash former CEO. I you know I believe in their platform. I've seen their operations. I played for the Cleveland Cavaliers. I uh, yes, I've had my shoulders rubbed by LeBron. You know what I'm saying? We're in there. Even so, when I get something in, I take a look at it, like, and I make sure I know about what I'm buying, right? Okay. So if I like, if let's say I've just for example bought the uh let's say the travis scott jordan one right off mm -hmm. stock x but while that shits you know because stock x takes forever for somebody to fucking ship and then get to detroit and then send it back i'm on instant gratification guy so me too during those fucking five or six days it takes whatever i'm in those cd reddit threads like what's the difference you know what, what I mean? I like, for? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Qu QC check the on stitching, Kung Lee's. The stitching on the you know? And when that shit comes in, I'm I'm checking it against all. The, so here's one of the funniest things about fake sneakers. There's a whole fucking community. Oh, it's huge, dude. It's huge, and they and they don't want nothing to do with the authentic people, and they stay to their own side, and they review fake shoes, fake shoe stores, quality control one another. Uh, point out flaws. They help the replica companies to try to get like, yo, on the next version, yeah, yeah, can you fix if, this? If you, can you, you fix that? This, right? right. So, I'll go in there straight incognito. I think my name is like Rep Boy Nine 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 or some shit on Reddit, like that just bullshit account I made. And I'll go in there if I bought a Travis Scott one. I'll read and read and, what am I and looking read. For? Right. Right. What was the last version from who? What was off? And you know, some of this shit is minuscule, bro. Some of it's like lift the insole and feel the thread at the third sewing spot. Like it's, it's dude. Little this shit. should be red. You know. So how do you feel? So how do you feel about the the? You children's? have to. Here's where I'm at with it. You have to be responsible. Okay. Like you have to like. You're the consumer. Yes. Yeah, so, so to, to answer like or to, or to tackle this JC Lopez thing from from my perspective, I'm always gonna say mind your fucking business. Mind exactly. your business. It's not my business, bro. I don't give a shit what he's doing, good or bad. Uh -huh. I'm happy for him because he's a nice guy. That's what I'm saying. Because every time I met him, he's been humble. Right. Uh, you know, he's a fan of my work. I'm a fan of his come up. I'm minding my fucking business. If he wants to bring those things in there, bro, like that's not my, that's not my derogatory mark to give. You know what I mean? Like if Urban, if Urban Outfitters or American Eagle, whoever he's partnered with, wants to be like, bro, what the fuck did you do? That's that's their business, right? Yeah. But if I walk in and I see that shoe, I'm not buying it from my nephew. I know what that is. Mm. You know, and and if I buy from Urban Necessities and there's no reason not to, like this isn't alarming me about mm. the rest of their stock. I'm gonna do it like I do everything else. I'm gonna educate myself. Keep I'm, gonna, I'm gonna look at it, and you know, they gotta have the right price. That's all any of these marketplaces has to I do. I think they were selling for like you 200 know? bucks. 
fuck it, man. I mean, you know, that's it's just none of my business, you know, because like it's a slippery slope. If all of a sudden I'm watching that man's pockets and, and his business decisions and his da, 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 like I'm putting a lot of energy into something that has absolutely nothing to do with me, you know. Right. And then if all of a sudden I'm like really hardcore, like gang mad with all kinds of people about he he bought these fake shoes for kids or whatever right <laughs> like then suddenly like man i see a lot of fake shoes in exton square mall bro am i like st pulling people over pensac and mar joints. you know what i mean like yeah uh, walking down in center city like Yo, walking down videos? 11th i'm supposed to start just checking people you ever i don't videos? give a shit you ever see the videos in the yeah. mall where like a dude's wearing a fair pair of fake sneakers and somebody yeah, yeah. walks over to him and is like yo man where'd you get those and the dude's yeah, yeah. like and the dude's like yo man you don't know about these i got these at king of prussia like eight years ago <laughs> it's a, i mean honestly i'm like not to be like like, you shouldn't do that. Not though. to be like, why do you care? Not to be like, man, I'm really on my grown man shit right now. But like, really, I don't care what you're wearing, that's, authentic, authentic or otherwise. Like, that's what I'm really like. You wear off white Prestos. I am well past the point in my life where I'm like, nice shoes, guy. Ah! Can I get a photo of those? Like, we're you know, it, it's just like, all right. I mean, I might recognize that you have some some sneaker knowledge, or if the whole fits dope, I might be like, oh, that guy's got style, whatever. But like I, I just felt crazy saying that out loud. That guy's got style. Like, I don't really give a shit. You know what I mean? Like you know I'm, I'm kind of worried about me in all regards. Right you know now. what's funny? Yeah. Whenever I see somebody wearing a pair of um of New Balance that are yeah. like made in England, or like yeah. something that like not many people like, I don't see them ever. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. whenever I see one, I do kind of give like a little head nod. Dude, it, it's the secret. It's the it's the secret exchange. Yeah. You know, like I used to I used to get people by um by by the footwear they were wearing like you know like you said like a little nod it's mm -hmm. like a yeah like oh you know the like you know, you know about that you know because if you're wearing that you obviously or it's even cooler you had no idea and you're just like you stumbled the good upon shit. these you know? that's dope but um with the world the way it is like where we're uh you know these kids are coming in it's mainstream as fuck right now well that's what i was getting uh, to it's, kais omar's got a million followers they all want to be and dress like him and buy his shit and would whatever. you ever tuck like, your sweatpants in your socks no nah, dude and in this world like i don't like that that guy isn't me anymore i don't know what to say like i don't know how else to say it right like so if you like whatever you're thinking is gonna validate yourself to me or or my generation or our culture or people in the industry it's not any it's it's vice versa now like if you're in a supreme parka with an off-white hoodie you're crushing and it. your sweatpants are, are yeezy and they're tucked into your socks and you're wearing off-white oh. prestos and, and you're covering your face or you're wearing a face mask or whatever like you got to be covering the face you didn't validate your, you invalidated yourself to me yeah, if, you not know? to me dude to me oh yo and if you're wearing like the supreme goggles on the oh, side dude. like if you're yo. there to me you 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 said all the wrong things so I, I'm not really so to that degree I'm not really checking for it I don't really care like you know and I don't care if that kid does all that mm. you know good you know what I see when I see him a sucker I want to sell him some shit <laughs> you, know what I mean? Yo, you know I got these new Johns <laughs> yeah 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 you ain't never seen these I, I see a sucker when I see that all right, shit man. a couple other things I wanted to speak on real quick what's up Ric Flair going to Adidas yeah now Adidas has done some very um, out of the box maneuvering uh, as of late. Um, yeah, they're they're kind of flailing. Their their ultra, their, their boost um, onslaught is, is coming to a uh, an end. Um, now now it's it's never not going to be comfortable. It's going to be their version of an Air Force. Well, one, it's settling, right? Like right. imagine the first couple Air Max models, and exactly. now, well, now you barely even hear right. about them. Right. I still love an Ultra Boost. I, I yeah. still own them. I still wear them. They're extremely comfortable. Whatever. Um, I think that Ric Flair. He posted a picture of him laying on a couch with four pairs of Yeezys, and he's doing the woo. Oh, that's dope. And I'm like, man, could Ric Flair pump kicks? Nah, dude, not at all. But it's still cool. It is. It's still cool as fuck. <laughs> like you can do shit just and to be cool. Flying, jet flying, Rolex wearing. Yeah, I don't. I don't like to talk about work publicly, but I mean the the fucking blanket statement is for the last five six years I've worked in marketing in the industry with everybody you can think of. I think it's cool. Like that. Sometimes I'll find myself in these meetings and I'll be like, let's just do this because it's cool. Like it becomes uncool when you try to make money on. It. There there are certain moves like that. 
I think this could be one of those, like where it's it's just fucking. Cool. It's just a shot. It's just cool. Yeah, it's just like why eh. not? Now, if they like really try to make you buy the shoe, and it hits clearance and all that, then it's like less. But if it's just like a moment, that's pretty cool. Well, I didn't realize how big wrestling like was these days. Oh, dude, it's huge now, and um, maybe bigger than ever now. I noticed that Shane McMahon, he's Vince McMahon's son. Yeah, he wears uh. Jordan ones to yeah, wrestle. That's like his thing. And Mosh, shout out to my man Mosh. He's the guy. Yo, Mosh does sneakers for all the divas, all the women wrestlers. All right, Mosh. He does sneakers for all the NFL players, mostly the Vikings, because he's a Vikings fan. All right, Mosh. But I've been seeing all these, because I asked him, I said, yo, are you taking any orders for customs? He's like, nah, it's football season. I was like, what's that mean? He's like, dude, I'm booked. Yeah, dude's great. I, I, I pitched him a pretty cool idea that i thought between our two platforms would have like really done well yeah but dude it's just too busy he's, he's like booked. i don't even need that kind of yeah. attention right now well, like about, oh thanks bro but yeah nah. think about what he's getting for uh yeah. you know a a, a, a fucking diva right, or you know right, what i mean and right. he gets to go to the event like that's dope yeah you know? no man he's he's killing it yeah but i was thinking like wrestling like they could couldn't like they could they use it's not him? rick flair yeah you're right it's not rick flair rick like Flair's i don't know who's out there now but like if this was happening in like 97 and they yeah. did it with like razor ramon like i would have been like out of my Chico. i would have been out of my mind you know Chico, you or, come around here or when he came back as diesel Ooh. remember he, he changed characters like four times and so did uh the dude nash yeah 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 Yo, the NWO was the shit. Anyway, yeah. I'm not gonna get into. Oh, that. maybe Nash came back as Diesel. Yeah, anyway, yeah, it was Diesel it was, it was, then yeah, Kevin Nash. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I wanted to talk about uh real quick. Okay, uh, what else do we got? Okay, Ronnie Feig. Kill All him. right. Um, and the way you say his last name is like an F and then an eyeball and then a G. It's Feig, right? Yep. Um, I learned that from watching you. Yo, my girl loved Kith treats. By the way, Miami really? was the first time she had had it. She bugged. She was really into it. Damn. So shout I've out, never had shout it out Ronnie. It's really Damn. good. Peep, peep Ronnie out here. But um, he released a new lookbook for the fall lineup. It's called Kith Air, I believe, or whatever. Yeah. And um, in it, I was checking out the the footwear. Now he he mentioned that it was their samples, right? Which means not all of these will go into production. Right. They're for his the runway. Which is good, by the right, way. Right. Right. Because you know, there's as like, good as they all are. Yeah. There's like it nine. It makes it cooler when it gets tighter. But there's like nine colorways of a of a gel light three with the um. The, the brolic midsole. Yeah. And then I saw two New Balance and two Ultra, the Free Hikers. There's yeah. two Free Hikers that are amazing. The one's Gore-Tex, the other one's like a sw That shoe's doing suede. pretty good, man. Dude, it's an amazing shoe. We're getting the triple back at Lapstone and Hammer.com. Oh, I'm going to need that. Um, and then uh, also, there are two New Balance silhouettes that I have not seen in years. One being the 1700, which if you if you search it. It's it's a dad type looking shoe. Yeah, that's shoe. a brolic one. Yeah, and then the nine nine two, which is he did a good job. Oh my god, this shoe, guys! It the last model, the last colorway that I saw was uh, American made. It was a gray, and it paid tribute to um, something in America. It had an American flag on the the back, and um, I, they pop up on uh, eBay from time to time. But um, yo, I don't if you're see them if, very much. if you're a reseller, let's cut the shit. I don't know anybody at Kith. And I work with other boutiques, so they ain't about to help me. If you're a reseller, I ain't going to hit on these things. Just get them all together. Uh -huh. All the 992s together. Yeah. And give me a good price. Come on. And let's just cut, you know, don't make me go searching. He used a... Don't beat me up. The, the, the pig suede that I he want used him. is called Nearly Navy. So it's like a lighter Very shade nearly. of navy. It's it's Nearly Navy. And then um, oh, he did a real... Yo, they're fire, dude. Just, I can, like him. You can a check lot. out anybody uh, his Instagram. You can check out Kith. Um, but uh, I'm excited about being excited about a Ronnie project too. Because one, one of the things about that is like uh, he's sort of a staple in those A6 New Balance, and he had a, kind of went away from that. And then Kith got real corny, to be honest, with the friggin' sprites and cokes and Disney and, and Jerry, and Tom and Jerry and Tommy. I like Tommy Hilfiger quite a bit, but I didn't really what, like the way that went one, down. The one like, Johnny did was cinnamon toast crunch. Dude, it's like, you know, it's a, it's a bit much, right? So does this return to form, mm -hmm. it, it doesn't appear to be triple branded. That's one of the things I hate the most about Ronnie's Columbia, said, but it, where it's like, like Ronnie Fly, four Kith, four New Balance, like, uh, Tommy Hilfiger, four Kith, four Ronnie Five. Yeah, it's like it's a bit much. So these seem four Timberland, like you know, and 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 the other thing, honestly, is you know, like I said, with everything going so mainstream for a while there, I didn't want Kith across the chest. They're overbranding. They overbranded everything, and you know, you suddenly look like 
everybody in those lines, you know, and I'm 36 years old, man. I'm not trying to look like a high school kid, you know? So for a while I, this I, line, I left yeah, it, this, I left it alone. This you know? line is dope, but this one is for us. Yep. Right. This one, this one is for us. This one is for people that were, you know, in Daytona's and in, you know what I mean? And, yep. uh, and in the central park joints, remember those? Yeah. With the, the maroon. Oh, so far. And earlier, yeah. And earlier than I that. I was going to wear salmon soles today. There 1300s. you go. You know, so um, so I'm back in on this one. Me too. I'm all in on this one. And again, I'm not even kidding. If you're a reseller who can get them all together and give me, you know, whatever. You need me to shout you out, whatever the hell. Let's figure that out because I do want them. Yeah, I need 11 and a half, no doubt. Yeah, now. <laughs> all right. What, what else? else we got going on? Shout out Ronnie, uh, by the way, uh, for the return to form. Oh yeah, dude. I know he's trying to mix it both, right? Yeah. Like I gotta do something for everybody and something cute and some crossover stuff. Yeah. And and like this is you know, this is my runway show, so it's like back to the, All the right. good shit. So Air Jordan, right? Yeah. They have not really made a performance model that could be classified as casual in ever. And I don't think they ever will. No, um they because shouldn't. Because they should right. Yeah. Now those days are gone because when we were kids, the performance models weren't as performancey than as they are you know what i mean like back you then, know what it is too though and this is true even today it's weird and we just dis- we get older so we fail to realize the performance models were cool to us in elementary school because we were playing oh shit, <laughs> you know what right. i mean and and that's still true today the Kyrie is the number one selling shoe in america yeah. by like a landslide and before that i believe it was the kd because these kids are playing affordable they're playing, yes. You know, so like in the middle schools, those things are still having their moment. They they are new classics. From what I these hear, these kids will get to be thirty years old and, and want the like, Kyrie Yo, one. Yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. So don't forget that. I see what you're saying. You mm-hmm. know, obviously ours were more timeless right. in their design for sure, mm-hmm. and the materials were leather well, and I things like, like that. I but. actually like the way these new ones look. Some of them are dope. Do you talking about the thirty four now? Thirty four, yeah. The only thing I don't like about the thirty four is. The, some of the colorways outside of the red and white one. Yeah. And then I hate that they just immediately tied it to Zion. I want so much more for Zion than the play in the 34. Do you and think the, the, that he can you know? live up to the hype? Like LeBron, I think no matter what you bet on it. LeBron did. Yeah. You know what I mean? But they bet on him. They immediately gave him the Zoom generation in his own line for his very fucking first game. They're not they doing did. that with Zion. No. They're, they're like Jordan Brand. They're hedging their bets. Jordan Brand always does this shit they where never they, go all it's, in. Al- it's always about michael jordan it, yeah you, it's you're, always, you're always and i understand be number that. two i always under i understand that completely but the the and this is like i'm talking directly to the marketers like yo if you respect me at all try to hear me on this and don't take it as like an insult take it as constructive criticism the 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 number of people that remember and genuinely watched him play and i'm not talking about youtube highlights is dwindling they are no longer the primary and shopping market and kicks. you know what i mean make it about zion like you should have made it about russ like you should have made it about you know, you've had a couple goes at this. Blake Griffin. You've always, you're always making it about Jordan. So here Zion comes, I think a generational talent, yep. certainly a generational marketing tool. And I, I think he's going to be playing in that fucking ugly green, blue and pink 34, which is like, what? I need you notice that Gentry Humphrey is back in the mix. He's Gentry the Humphrey, untuck your ears and your fitted. That looks so terrible. His fitted is always like two and a half sizes did, too big. Everybody anyway. now he did one of the shoes that I like that everybody hates. He did the two thousand nine yeah, yeah, yeah. Air Jordan, right? I love that shoe. I fucking love I'm it. I'm only playing too. You can wear your hat like that if you want. What do I care? It's all good, kid. Yeah. But um if you look at this shoe, he used like the same molding for the the outsole as right. he did the two thousand it's like that. It looks like blown glass. I, it looks good. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I just like, man, you ever watch something from a distance and you're like, I could do better if like if only I had all the range. It's probably not true. But, but, I, but right now I think it. I think it's easy. It's easy in hindsight to yeah. look at a model and say, oh, if you did this. But when you're looking at a blank canvas, it's different. They need to go back to what it was. OK, so the Air Jordan 12 came out. Mm hmm. Then the 13, then the team, or the team and then the 13, mm-hmm. right? And so what it was was Jordan playing in his shoe and Ray Allen and Bibby and whoever playing in all these really dope team models. And it really, really, really worked for Jordan Brand, right? And some of those team models are like classics. The if Jumpman you're my Pro age. is the best Dude, one. Dude, it's like they're incredible. It could have been the 12, mm-hmm. right? And then 
now it's it's different right like there's the signature shoe that mike's not here to play in so all their best talent plays in it it shouldn't be that way it should be the zion with no friggin Jumpman logo you can put Jumpman logo on the insole or whatever right mm -hmm. the zion yeah and then these 34s in on all your jordan team members you know what i'm saying and like or the Russ is similar, you know. I know Russ they're has gonna, his own signature they're now. They have but, to try uh, this. They have to do that. Like they have. To, I think Zion is is a, would have been a great opportunity. I think they're already dropping the ball in that. As far as I know, he'll per, he'll start in the in the thirty four for a while. So I don't know, man. You know, like it it needs to transition to some degree away from Michael Jordan. Like the idea now, it it sounds almost silly. That like well into his fifties, if, if if he's not sixty yet, I don't even know how old he is now. But and so so many years removed from playing, and thirty plus years removed from his first signature shoe, mm. we're all supposed to pretend like this is his signature shoe, mm. like this is the Jordan. Like you know, we talked with Michael, and here are some of the things that he wanted. Like, bro, come on, mm. you know what I'm saying? Like it, it, it enough. I don't know if they want to stop at 35 to make it nice and clean or what, but like, it, do you it, think they ever will stop? I don't No, I don't think they will, but I think they need to position it more like that's the team model and we have a new franchise player. All right. I think that's where it needs to go. Like the idea that it's like, you know, Michael Jordan's going to be fucking 70 and they're going to be like, um, do ex his exact specifications to Jordan 42. Like for what? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that should be the Zion Seven by then. You know what I mean? Did you see? Um, I don't know. Did you see the roast of? Um, Let me know if you feel me on that. They did a roast of Alec Baldwin recently. Oh, and, really? And Blake Griffin was one of the guys. Oh, dude, and he fucking went at. He did Caitlyn Jenner. Oh, dude. And he was like, "I would like to thank you for, on behalf of all of the NBA, and uh, half of the rappers in the world for giving your daughters their daddy." Issues. It was a really well timed yes. comedic timing wise. And then he it did another well. one. He goes and um. Recently, um, she had her full transformation done, which stands to make my point that uh, no women in the Kardashian family want a white dick. Oh, dude, he did. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, he crushed, he crushed it, dude. dude. He and is funny. He yeah. he should transition it into movies or whatever after. He's playing. got he's got timing though. Like he he was really funny. Like right? I I I think it comes out like in the next couple of days, but. Uh, Jumping off of that, you know Scott Disick. He's like yeah. he's like uh, the baby's father of um, one of the Kardashians. The coolest guy in the whole group. He has a, a clothing company called uh, Talentless. Nice. And they sell basics. Good. They're like a standard issue um, type. They sell uh, pigment dyed sweatpants. Pig Shout out JSP. Yeah. Yeah. So I was actually looking at it, and they're a little steep. It's like one twenty for a pair of sweatpants. Right. And I was like, man. Uh, you know, I was thinking, like, do you think it would hurt or help him that he puts his his name on the brand? Like, do you think, like, people would hate because he's, like, already... I love that it's called Talentless. I didn't, I'm didn't. i learning about it, it right now, but yeah. I love that. Well, it's a playoff of, like, yeah, everybody says, like, what do you do? Yeah, like, yeah. you know what I mean? You guys are talentless. For those of you who don't know, he flips real estate and was, like, doing mad well before. That's how you meet a Courtney Kardashian. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, this guy didn't wasn't doing nothing. But anyway, he's always dressed really well, so I'm assuming the stuff looks good. Yeah. I think I'm going to check he's out. He's a sucker for quality, so I'm sure it's well made. Yeah. I'm going to check out a piece, I think. Dude, I'm with it. I, I, I prefer it not say Scott Disick on oh, it doesn't if say I'm any, wearing yeah, it. Yeah, it doesn't say anything. Yeah, It's yeah, just yeah, basics. Yeah. Well, I'm with it. I, I, I like that. And uh, also like standard issue tees. Shout out to them. I very much well. dig standard issue. Shout out to them, man. Uh, Yeezy V3s. I don't They've know, been revealed. Man. What do you think, Meng? I don't know. I... Uh uh, oh, and how about the the Crocs? Oh, dude, I'm I'm with the weird shit. I love the weird. I'm shit. I'm with the weird shit. Don't stop Yo, doing weird. Do you shit. remember when the first the first uh, visuals of the the Yeezy 750 came out when he's yeah, on the yeah, plane? Yeah, hundred percent. He's on the plane, and the person from behind him is taking a picture, and he's showing Wexler. They're looking at the model yeah, on the yeah. plane. Everybody shit on them. Yeah. Remember what the pictures were? It was a picture of an UGG boot. With duct tape over the front. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. Everybody was hating on them. And now look, that shoe's revered as like, what, one of the best Yeezys? Oh, yeah. So like, ev ev when something's new, it never looks cool. Here's the thing, man. They have to do weird shit. This is like, this is across the board. Like, Nike's done a couple things. I don't know if you've seen the 10th collection. I don't know if you've seen... Uh, Whatever they're doing, they're they're trying shit, and right now, it, not all of it, you know, from my retail perspective, is really hitting. But they have to like, 
you know because you never know remember alpha series remember like there's shocks at a moment like you need to you need to keep pushing and well, for a little while there it's easy for the brands to say like if we just keep making jordan ones air max 90s air max ones we'll pay the bills uh, yeah like none of that dude and also like you can't really this is a proclamation that needs to be made you can't call yourself a sneakerhead if all you want is one of the three models that's hitting right now and you decide what you want by what's hitting right now you it's see what i'm saying fuck, like i need 350s jordan like if i'm a fucking sneak i'm calling myself a sneakerhead and i'm like after every jordan one after every yeezy 350 v2 or v3 or whatever the fuck and uh whatever off white is out right now then yeah. you're not really a sneakerhead like being and that's cool you could be what it, you call yourself something else or call yourself that if you want again like everyone mind their own business but the fact of the matter is like being a sneakerhead is really about trying the new stuff and making shit cool. You know, like the uh, Puma is good at that. Uh, he He's a guy that just wears what he likes. And sure, some of it like, yeah, you, you can catch him in the cactus plant flea market, Vapor Max or whatever. But you also more regularly catch him in just straight up Nike running like just yeah. whatever. Like I think the one episode he was, wearing, he was wearing one of the R4 shocks. And, he, I was and, like, nice. and he's definitely out there making it cool. Like if you look yeah. at his IG comments yeah. like, yo, yo, I had uh, but you know, Did you see offset. His Dude, episode? That was a great episode. What? Great yo, offset, episode. Offset knows his shit great episode man um but th again like that's what it, that's what it's really about being a sneakerhead so i don't want these brands to stop doing weird shit like do weird weirder we shit. need to encourage that hell yeah and uh if you're out there and you're like really into sneakers try and try new things you know what i mean i'm really into the adapt like the adapt bb i love so i'm trying this adapt Hirachi for oh, sure. I gotta get a pair of them. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, and, and if you you vote with your money, they're gonna be tough to get. As a consumer, you vote with your money. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, uh, if you're out there and you're like, you know, getting into sneakers or you're more established in sneakers, like, don't forget to check out that stuff. It's easy to get distracted, man. Though UNC Jordan ones from a couple weeks ago was like the biggest lore. Like people were bugging, and I'm like, yo, what? Like these, it's gonna settle in a couple weeks that these were just eh. And that's what's happened. You know what I mean? Like, because they are a nice colorway of a Jordan One, but we've had oh, a lot the of that. Over, yeah, 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 yeah. They were bugging, bro. You should have seen my DMs. Like, it it felt it felt like it was a real hyped release in terms of Nick's like, can you help me? No, uh, Nick's Jordan Threes, threes. Are this Saturday. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, what I'm saying is like, don't get so caught on that. Like, you don't really need a your seventeenth pair of Jordan Ones that are blue. <laughs> Spend a little money on it. Hey, let me try your uh, React, uh, uh, the tenth collection, uh, Mokto. Like, you know what um, I'm saying? Like, get out there. Bullet RC. He's on yeah. um, on YouTube. He uh, buys. He's a good guy. He for that buys shit too. all the crazy shit, and I love that dude for that. Every time I see Bull in person, uh, he's in something cool that isn't hype. That's I for love real. That shit. That's for real. Yeah, he's a good um, dude. He's got pretty good taste too. Um, so anyway, he's, he's got a pair of sneakers. I need to bull. I need those pink, uh, air max ones. Thanks. Well, there you go. Shout out. Uh, again, like I'm not judging you do whatever the fuck you want to do. It's none of my business, but I'm encouraging this, like, you know, vote with your money. I agree. That's, that's what tells the brands where to go, you know, and, yep. and they're trying weird shit. Encourage them to try weird shit. I will try those foam Yeezy croc things and you know honest to god if i don't like the way they look like on the streets they're like dope for running around, around my apartment crib. complex yep. like you yep. know hitting the pool whatever yep um but try weird shit dude you know why i like the 350 it's not because i think it's the most stylish shoe in fact that kind of that shoe like you don't look as cool as you think you look in that shoe <laughs> right <laughs> including myself but they pack awesome so when i travel yeah, there's no they go creasing. they go flat and i can bring four colors yeah they're dope. you know what i'm saying so i like i like them like that i only have one pair it's not about the fact that they're yeezys or that i think i look so cool in them or whatever like yeah. that actually just became a really comfortable flight shoe to me right i think it's everybody's flight show so be out there and, and try stuff for different reasons and, and it's not always about hype and what everybody else thinks you mm -hmm. know uh but definitely try the weird shit and encourage the brands to be weird Absolutely. and like your meme isn't that funny lay off you know what i'm saying like everybody thinks they got a joke everybody thinks they have to slam and joke in the this one culture. was like a, it was like you know a hockey I mean? mask and you look <laughs> mad dumb like three weeks later buying the thing you're so just to. chill. Well, everybody that was trashing the old Yeezys, like when they first surfaced, remember the first yeah. um, Yeezy 350? It looked like the person did like a, you know, those like 
G.I. Joe hydro plane yeah, 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 boats. Yeah, yeah. With like the, you know, it was like one of those next to it. Like, yo, dog. It's one of the biggest things I realized this year, though, is like not everyone's opinion like matters. No. You know, just hit the heart and keep it pushing. Just, just have That's your, including myself. Like, use I your have opinion. Stopped, yeah. I have stopped with the running commentary. Right. Like, oh, this one. Oh, this. Like, I look back. I wish I could delete all of my Twitter, but there's some stuff I want to keep, you know? Yeah. Otherwise, I would start fresh and just say less. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Say less, people. Hit the heart and keep it pushing. Because you're going to end up wearing that fucking shoe or trying to sell me like that shoe. Or like, you're, you know, eh, your joke ain't funny either. Leave the memes to, to people that are better at it. Anyway. Guys. I'm back. Thank you for tuning in. Shout out to Aaron. Thank you for keeping it going, bro. Yeah, no problem. Like, we are not flatlined because of you. You had to do something. Dude, you're the man. I appreciate you, and I appreciate everybody listening. Oh, dude, real quick. I did not forget about those New Balance. I will design them Monday. You, you got my word. I'm looking Coil in the eye. I saw it. Okay, I'll design them Monday because the I have up. a I have an engagement brunch, whatever white people shit that is. Uh, that sounds fun. <laughs> I, no, I'm excited to see the fam and show and, and celebrate. But anyway... I uh, have that this weekend. Monday, I'll design that shoe. We'll get the order in. Coil will do up the box. We are going to wrap that up and ship that out. Shout out to everybody who supports. If you would like to support the podcast, it's super simple. There's a link that says support this podcast uh, in the bio of whatever you're listening to. That'll take you to uh, uh, a little page on Anchor that'll allow you to donate anywhere from a dollar to whatever the hell you want and to join our in, Hall of Legion, Heroes. Dude. The Hall of Heroes and all the money. It goes, really makes a difference. All so, the money goes right back into this thing, dude. We're not balling out on the budget like no. we're using it to further this that lets us know that you guys like the podcast yeah help us help you be a part of it and we appreciate it. we'll see you guys next thanks, week thanks guys imagine if we didn't record that whole thing <laughs> <laughs>